Okay. This is crazy. There's like a huge amount of people in here. And I was like, oh, hey, Alex. <laughs> um, I want to really thank everyone um, for coming out. This is amazing. Jason, Alex, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you for my other, oh, uh, thank you for all my other speakers who are going to be with me. Um, so this is what I've been doing for the last five years, is figuring out how to uh, help teams in the university space, research space, and including now my own startup, is to figure out how to build AI products for humans. This is very hard because I've been having this issue for the last, I don't know, 10 years, is figuring out how to do communication between business and technology. So usually what happens when I'm thinking about building products, you know, the usual is like we bring the right people, the business side together and the technology, and they start fusing in together and they're making a business case and they're thinking about technology and like this is how we're gonna solve that problem. And usually, it doesn't work out that way because the reality is this. This is usually the face. Now, who's a marketer in the room? That's your face, that's Beyonce. You are Beyonce right now. Yeah, see, I knew Jason was gonna like that. Uh, who's the tech in the room? You're Beyonce as well. Everyone else? You're Beyonce as well. <laughs> because you're in this room and people are talking about what they think is important. I'm tech, this is what I'm gonna build, uh, we need data, looking at you, I always want some more data and data, please tell me how to get it, and business turns around and goes, no. This is the relationship, now reverse it. The tech is saying, um, you know, this is what we're gonna build for the future, we're your new AI lab, uh, let's do this, and then the business is going, I'm not ever, I'm not able to implement what you're talking about. So I think of, it as, think, of it, think of it as an issue with communication between these teams. And I always think about how we have to move forward. And usually when we're building products and you're thinking about creating new algos that are gonna solve something, usually marketing and sales is coming six to eight months after. They're not in the room from the beginning. So you're not getting Kirk in the beginning, you're getting him after the fact. Right? And this is not how we start building products. And you would think it's common sense to have more people and stakeholders, to have the business side in the room, to have tech talking to each other. I don't know whoever has had to do that. It's very difficult. Um, so this is what pisses off mad, mad men, uh, or math men, is they still need mad women. Anyone watch Mad Men? Okay, <laughs> I was gonna say. So the Mad Men are the, you know, the business side, right? They are the ones who are thinking about the customer, they're thinking about how to make money. Um, and then Math Men are like, look, we can take care of it. So we'll build an algorithm for that. And then what happens? It usually runs into issues because they're not thinking about the user. They're always thinking about the solution. So I'm always trying to balance this conversation because I really believe we're building for them. And if we're not in the room, so all the marketing and salespeople and the ethics people and everyone who is not the tech lead in our group has to be in the room. And because I'm getting down, I'm thinking about always about the elephant in the room. So I talked about cameras, that's your camera. And so when we're thinking about AI products, we're going back to the idea of the business in the room. We're talking about the expert, the domain expert. We're talking about the marketing. We're talking about also the data and the AI person and all the people who are experts. But at the end of the day, we also need the privacy and the digital ethics person. Because your products really do screw up when you don't have more people in the room discussing issues. So the question is, when you're in the room with your team, and you're discussing what kind of products are we gonna build for the future? What kind of technology can we use to solve? What can we do? Who is in the room? Does it look like just like you? Also, who's in the room with the same background? Are they all computer science and CS? Oh, computer science engineers. You know, are they all the same backgrounds? Are they always all the same people? Or is it all marketing only? and then you'll talk to IT, I know you don't want to talk to IT. 
I already had one marketing VP tell me that last week. They're like, we don't even want them in the room. And I go, how do we facilitate innovation if not more people are in the room? But the big thing for me is asking the team, are we all on the same page? Are we all talking about the same goal of creating product that is really for people, for our users? So I want you to continuously asking that question, even if it's silly, and we've had tons of beautiful reports, and everyone's like thinking they're on the same page. Usually, they're not. So I want you to be mad. I want you to get out there and be a bit mad hattery. And always be in that room with your team, pushing them harder to create diversity in not only backgrounds, but also opinions. That's kind of what I do every day. Thank you. Stay up with questions. Oh, we got questions. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Edit that. Question. Before we do questions, um, it's a bit of a tradition here. I, I noticed not a lot of people did it here. But uh, at the end of our speakers, at the five minutes, to thank them, we give them a standing ovation. That's just the way that we do it here at Tactio. So let's try it again. Say thank you again, Helen. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Woo! Let's show them. All right, guys, quiet down. Quiet down. We've got to do questions. Okay. Damn. <laughs> thank you. Jason's trained his kids to do that every time he comes home. <laughs> awesome. Okay. While we wait for questions, I'll ask the first one. Yes. So the first time you get everyone in the room, what's, what's the difficulties you encounter? Like, it can't be easy. What's the biggest challenge? Um, I think it's breaking the ice. You know, I think it's like they all, everyone has their own mission. They've been given strategies from all of their own units. So business has their own strategy. Uh, tech knows what it needs to do. Everyone has their own budgets. So it's kind of like this mishmash of no playing field yet. Like you got to level it a bit to have that conversation of what the priorities for each unit is. But it's also just saying what frustrations. I think it's good to start with what you're pissed off at or what's happening. But you have to be in a safe space to do that. Like you have to be comfortable with your your colleagues to do that. And I've seen very successful teams do this. Um, I know I do that with my team. It's okay to be frustrated. Um, but it's also, but you have to be constructive. But you have to kind of not only talk about your objectives of the year, but also talk about what you're frustrated about the year. So it's a balance of strategy, tactics, and what annoys you, maybe. Last question. Hello, thank you for your talk. I'm just curious, how often would you recommend um, meeting with the other parties in the corporation or business? Would you say bi-weekly, maybe monthly? That's a really good question. It depends on when the product has to be released, usually. You know, like, you know, we're, we have a goal, we have a strategy that we have to do something in, you know, eight months or two years or no, two years. Who doesn't? Okay, maybe banks do in two years. Um, you know, um, but you want to rev that up where um, it depends on the timing, how you reverse engineer. Um, but I usually, they'll start thinking about the solution then bring them too late in the process. So that's take care of that first, having the, the people who are going to sell the product or interact with it quicker. And don't only use business analysts. I think it should start early and more frequently. So I don't know, monthly? You know, but it depends on the team. So I can't answer what that means. But I think talking to a lot of my... Um, like a lot of people I work with, a lot of industry, um, when they're building, they're thinking, they're just, go, oh, the business analyst will take care of it. So they think they are integrating someone monthly or you know weekly or whatever, but is the business analyst good enough to really talk about the voices of the customer? Um, that's what you should, before you start saying, oh, look, we have weekly meetings with our business analyst, question the position, question the voice and the, the understanding of that person. I'm not saying they're dumb. I'm just saying, you know, question if that's the right person or should it be people? Right. Thank you, Helen. Yeah, no worries. Yeah.